shapes. Even though it's rainy and dreary today, I think we should still make a bit of an effort with the face. So as you can see, I went for a nice pinky berry look. This is just the color scheme I'm going for today. I think it's very comfortable and cozy. All right, guys, it is time for lunch. And thank goodness my HelloFresh package arrived yesterday. I wanna thank HelloFresh for also sponsoring this video. I have been an advocate for HelloFresh for years now. I think it's such an incredible service. I love how everything is pre-portioned so there's less food waste and less food prep. I actually have kept all the recipes that I love by HelloFresh in this nice little stack here. Ever since I've had a HelloFresh subscription, my love for cooking has just skyrocketed and I can really attribute them for teaching me how to cook so many different types of recipes. So if you're in a recipe rut, HelloFresh is amazing. So in my package, I have three options and I'm gonna go with the Rajas quesadillas. This sounds like the perfect rainy day food. With HelloFresh, I can save time and keep my stress levels low because I don't need to worry about meal planning and preparing. You can have the food ready in about 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with their quick and easy options. They're also really flexible, so if you wanna switch up delivery dates, uh, food preferences, or skip a week, you can do that on their website. HelloFresh is also committed to giving back. They've donated over 4 million meals to charity in 2020, and they're gonna continue to step up their donations during these hard times. Yay! Wow, yeah. what a beast. I'm so excited. You haven't made a quesadilla like this before. No, not with like a creamy tomato yeah. filling. Bit of everything. Mmm. 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 So good. Wait, what the heck? It's so good. It's so good. Poblano peppers are so good in the quesadilla. And this crema. Mmm. Mmm. Guys, we're gonna continue to tuck in. Mm -hmm. You guys need to try out HelloFresh for yourself. If you haven't, just go to hellofresh.com and use my code 10 genim for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's a good deal. That's an amazing just deal. Just the 10 free meals, and they're good meals as well. So enjoy, guys. Mmm. Mm. that I should probably get started with my February bullet journal spread. Today is February 1st, so a little anxious to get this done. Normally I like to have it ready by the time the month is starting, but I wanted to do this whole experience with you guys. So the general vibe I'm going for are these two images that I found on Pinterest. I'm gonna go with like this cute sweetheart candy-like theme, and then I'm gonna copy this person's font because the handwriting looks so lovely. So inside this pencil case, I've got all my bullet journal necessities. I've got an eraser. I've got a lead pencil. I love these Micron 01 pens. So it's honestly just these three things. This year for my bullet journal, I'm just gonna keep the format quite uniform. Last year, I really like played around with all different types of formats, but you know what? At the end of the day, like I just want to have my days all in a row. I'm not really sure what this method is called. I think maybe it's called like a line calendar, but basically I just write out all the days and the dates and I will write out the most important theme that I have to do. So whether it's filming day or it's editing day or I have an appointment, I will know that it's coming up on this nice list. 
So on the right side, I have my habit tracker. So I've got exercise, flossing, washing Cheeky's eyes, if I wrote that day, if I stretched, and like if I was generally healthy that particular day. When I track myself, I keep myself accountable. So I like to keep tabs on these six habits. And then for my weekly spread, I keep it pretty simple. I love to go in with pencil first. When I'm doing this, I'm like listening to music or a podcast or even like YouTube videos in the background. And I just noticed that this is just a nice time for me to unwind and not stare at a screen it's nice to do something with my hands there's something extremely meditative about doing constant repetitive work i don't know i've always found comfort in doing diligent repetitive actions like this all right guys that's a wrap for my february bullet journal spread easy peasy so i've gathered all the tools i need to do my nails I am due for a manicure. I think I'm gonna be pretty boring and I'm gonna go with the same exact color. Anything that is low maintenance, I'm all for. And so the color I love is OPI Bubble Bath. This just looks good on so many skin tones. You know, when I do my nails is when I love to catch up on some YouTube videos. I wanted to do a shout out on my three young YouTube creators that I've been enjoying. Uh, I've been on YouTube for a decade now and it's so interesting to see like how this younger generation is creating videos and content I feel like these three creators are like probably under the age of 22, but their work is phenomenal. So the first creator I want to shout out is Amanda Mary Anna. I believe the first video I saw of hers was The Rise of A24. It's basically like a video essay on why A24 is so popular. And A24 is like a film studio slash production slash distribution company. They're associated with like my favorite films like Midsummer, Lady Bird, Ex Machina. Uh, what else do they do? I don't know, they've got like banger after banger. There's something very soothing about her energy and I like her video essays. I think the topics that she chooses to talk about are really unique. Like I'm about to watch her video, how to be alone with your thoughts. Like, yes. Let's talk about solitude. Even though she's so young, it's so nice to see someone who's so aware and introspective. She's amazing. So the second YouTuber I wanna talk about is Mina Lee, or Lei. How do I pronounce that last name? So she is also like a commentary slash analysis channel, but she focuses on film and fashion. She is so knowledgeable about fashion. Like I feel like I'm taking a history of fashion class when I'm watching her videos. And she also like reminds me of a Tim Burton character. She's definitely got her own unique style. I feel like she is living proof that you can really rock any look as long as you have conviction and the confidence. Her videos are really well researched. I really like how she takes the time to dig up examples. Like if she's talking about a certain garment, she'll like put the actual photo in of like something from the 1800s. I feel like I learned so much through her videos, especially with fashion and it gets me excited about it. And then lastly, we have D'Angelo Wallace. I believe his rise to fame was when he did those exposés on Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, and Tati Westbrook. That's how I found him, but I stayed for his personality. He does a lot of commentary about just internet personalities and also pop culture personalities. I'm currently subscribed to both his channels and honestly with him, he's so consistent. No matter what video I click of his, I know it's gonna be interesting. Even if the title's kinda like, I don't know who these people are. Like once I click on it, I am entertained. And that is definitely a skill. So yeah, those are the three young creators that I wanted to shout out. Uh, please let me know if there are any YouTube creators that you enjoy watching. I feel like the creators I watch are all like so random. It depends on my mood, but today I'm definitely in like a commentary slash analysis vibe. I don't know, it honestly, it felt way more fulfilling than like scrolling through social media all day. All right, nails are finished. I'm showing the hand where the nails are a little bit longer. Yeah, this one, I just had to cut it short just so it would match the middle finger. As you can see, this is just a nice, clean, and natural polish.
cream sheets feel so good on my skin. Oh, it does. Uh, it's the feet as well. It's the feet. The oh, it is. Oh. It's just so satiny. So my girl M just gave me one of her vessel sticks. So this is not a pregnancy test. I pee on this stick and it will tell me what is going on in my body from like my nutrition levels, how my vitamins are, and just it basically does like an examination of what's going on in my body. I'm very intrigued. So I'm going to I'm going to pee on it and I'll tell you guys what my results are. These test cards contain two different types of tests. So my score is an 83. What does that mean? I am sure that's like out of 100. So it looks like my biotin is too high. So it looks like my pH level is balanced, which is exciting. Keeping your body's acid-base status well balanced. It could be because I'm not drinking any more coffee. Vitamin C is good. My folate levels are apparently too high. My magnesium is low. Not gonna lose sleep over that. My ketones are moderate. And then my hydration is high. I am bummed that I can't see my cortisol levels. That's the one that I was really curious about to see if it was quite high or if I was stressed. Overall, I feel like I am totally fine with an 83. This is cool. I'll just make sure that I have some more magnesium. Guys, this afternoon, we are going to clear out this shelf here. This just has a bunch of my books that don't really fit anywhere. So I thought it'd be interesting to share with you guys what books I'm gonna donate and what books I'm gonna keep. In this instance, I am, unfortunately, I'm gonna judge the book by its cover. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I want this shelf to look nice. This thing isn't even really a bookshelf. I feel like I'm supposed to put like, a decorative bowl or a plate. Roll Doll, someone like you. This is one of my prized possessions. I know Roll Doll is known for a lot of his books that he writes for children, like James and the Giant Peach, Matilda, Witches. Honestly, he was my favorite author growing up. But this book is a compilation of all his adult short stories. On top of the iconicness, it also looks gorgeous. John Green, Looking for Alaska. Going to donate this. Chuck Palahniuk, Invisible Monsters. This one, I'm going to keep. There's a lot of quotes that I really enjoyed in here. Palahniuk is such like a visceral, raw writer. The Happiness Project. We're gonna donate this. Oh my God, Sylvia Plath, The Bell Jar. This book was extremely depressing, but I remember really enjoying it. Oh my gosh, this is one of those books that I've had for maybe a decade. I have been trying to read this for 10 years. This is just one of those like classic novels that I just need to crack open. Here we have Ham on Rye by Charles Bukowski. This is another book that's been with me since the Davis days. Have I read this? No. I think I bought this because this guy that I liked told me that Bukowski was his favorite author. And so I was like, ah, maybe I'll read it. It goes with the color scheme, guys. Like, look. Catch 22. I'm gonna be honest, I picked up this book at the beginning of quarantine and I got, how far did I get into it? I got up to the sixth chapter and I just, I can't stand this. Like the, the plot is too scattered and I know that that's the point of this book. It's supposed to be like chaos, but I just really couldn't follow through. I didn't really like this book. So I'm gonna have to donate it. So here we have the picture of Dorian Gray. Oh, this is one of my favorite books of all time, but I am not digging the cover. Like it just looks so, it just looks so whack, man. Like this is not some, I mean, actually, this part actually looks fine. You know what, we'll keep it. Well, we, we shall keep it. Ooh, we've got Gillian Flynn, Dark Places. This is an amazing thriller. I already have this on my Kindle, so I'm just gonna have to give this one away. Here we have Emotional Intelligence. I actually did not enjoy this book whatsoever. It just skims the surface and it doesn't really dive deep. The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, another literary classic. I already have this on Kindle, so we're gonna donate this. 100 Imagine Ancient Love Poems. I totally forgot I had this book. Oh, this is gonna be really great to read on Valentine's Day. Okay, definitely gonna keep this. 
George Orwell, 1984. This is an absolute must read and a must keep. So I actually borrowed this from my friend. Basically, this is another extremely depressing story about a man who tries to commit suicide in multiple ways. So this is Martha Stewart's manual. I also got her homekeeping handbook. I bought this last year in April. Oh, Martha Stewart obviously has her shit together uh, with the presentation of the home. This is essentially an inst instruction manual on how to like keep your place tidy and organized. Dude, I bought another Martha Stewart book. This one's about organizing. Also, untouched. I got sucked into this. Like, look at this. She, she tells you how to organize your pantry. Like, do I need this book? Like, I've got YouTube at my fingertips. I wonder if she has a section about organizing a bookshelf. So this is the end product. Ideally, there would be less books, you know, but I think this is a huge improvement on what it used to look like before. What I try to do is I try to color coordinate it. So on the left, we've got my pinky peachy tones. In the center, we've got the white. And on the right, we've got a mix of grays and beiges. On the right corner, we've got some blues and some blacks. On the left side, we've got some chunkier books. It doesn't look as chaotic as we first started, so I would say that this is improvement. Watching the news, it was all very factual. There was never some sort of entertainment. How much can someone else check those sources and how um, available is that to the public? And who's checking them? Who's putting the balances on corporations? When the government has control over information like that, and I don't know to what extent it is, but then you start to look at like Wellian in 1984 and how like there are totalitarian regimes that can just control information. I love my book club so much. Everyone who shows up to the, to the monthly discussions are angels and I just love to hear all different types of perspectives. And I like how not everyone agrees with the things that are being said, but it's just like a nice, open, safe discourse. This month's book was Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman. This was written in the 1980s and he just goes on about the harmful effects of the age of television, basically saying that we've become a society that just lives to be entertained. As of this moment, we don't record our meeting. I just want to, it's like kind of nice that it's just one of those things where you where you had to be there and then it's gone. We have monthly signups on Curl Up Club, so definitely follow that if you want to tune in for our next discussion. And February's book pick is all about love. It's The Love Languages by Gary Chapman, I believe. Is that his name? Yeah, Gary Chapman, yeah. I feel like this discussion will be really interesting because I love to hear how people love being loved. You know, it's so good.